a lot of people want this body type and I personally was able to unlock the code to get the body type. So let's get into it. I can't just call you when the moon is rising. I'm craving every moment with you. I can't just need you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jasmine. If you're new here, I am a certified personal trainer and online coach. So if you are interested in something like that, go ahead and click the link in the description below because I am here to transform confidence one rep at a time. But let's go ahead and get right into this video, which is how to get slim thick. Calling in thick to work. Before we even start getting into the details of the video, we need to go ahead and do a little bit of rewind so you can get to know me and how my fitness journey started and how I got to where I am now. So let's go ahead and rewind to history. To begin with, growing up, I was not all that curvy. I had a larger stomach, twig-like legs, and my glutes were definitely non-existent. I remember the days begging my mom if I could get a boob job. Everyone else in my family had a larger size chest, but I was the only odd one out. She would give me the infamous mother speech of, you're a late bloomer and they're eventually gonna come in, sweetie. Even though the chest part never actually came through, yay me. Me, being the little impatient girl that I was, went down, went down the, black the black hole, hole of the of Pinterest the feed. feed. I was determined to look like a curvy woman. I got a gym membership, went through way too many trials and errors, and unlocked the secret to the slim, thick cult. <clears throat> I mean, community has been gatekeeping us for all these years. Since I don't gatekeep on this channel, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we actually need to get to know is what in the actual heck is slim thick to begin with? According to the Urban Dictionary, because yes people, it's not an actual real word in the dictionary, it is made up. A slim thick is a girl with a slim body shape, but a big booty and big thighs, usually with a smaller waist and flat stomach. <clears throat> BBL, <clears throat> Kimmy Kardashian, <clears throat> not to call people out, but now I understand why most people want to have this body type because in the perception of our really evil, shady society, it is desirable. And I'm not out here trying to promote no negativity, okay? This is not my perception of beauty. I think all body types are gorgeous in all different ways. But I know a lot of people want this body type and I personally was able to unlock the code to get the body type. I'm here to spill the insiders of how to get the hourglass slim thick figure if that's what your desire is. And no, it's not dropping 20K Kim Kardashian. I mean humans. Section one is going to be knowing your starting points and executing accordingly. By this I mean, are you overweight? Are you underweight? What is your body type? This is your foundation. Imagine trying to build a house without a base. It would literally fall apart. So don't let that be you. If you're overweight, then you need to trim down some fat first to achieve the slim because you already have the thick. If you are underweight, you need to gain some necessary weight to achieve the thick because you already have the slim. You get it? You get it? Because I see so many people out there promoting how to get thick, how to get slim thick, and they're just promoting like how to gain all this weight. And it's like, but what if you are already overweight? You need to drop that necessary amount of weight to get you into that body composition that is in between, you know? Like you have an upper body that is a little bit more slim and a lower body that's a little bit more thickums. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying. Next up is knowing your actual body type. And what I mean by this is not if you're overweight or underweight. It's literally, are you a mesomorph? Are you an ectomorph? Are you an endomorph? Or are you a combined body type between the three? And these do matter because it will affect your diet, your training methods, as well as where you carry your weight distribution, which could affect the diet and training factors. So let's go ahead and get into what the body types are. First up, we're gonna go ahead and talk about mesomorph body types. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little disclaimer. I am not a scientist. I am not anything but a girl that researches intensively about all these topics. And I was going to school for all this stuff. So I know a little bit more than like the average. I'm just giving you a brief explanation so you guys get a narrowed down version of like a science background because 
because sometimes when you're listening to somebody that's giving too much terminology, it gets a little complicated. Anything happening. So I'm going to make it easy for all of us to understand. A mesomorph body type is somebody that is able to develop muscle easier than the other body types. And they have more muscle on their body than fat. So morphs are typically strong and solid, not overweight, not underweight. They're right in between. Mesomorphs really don't have a problem eating or not eating as they lose weight easily, but they also can gain weight easily as well. An ectomorph is somebody that's the complete opposite. They are somebody that has such a hard time keeping on weight. They're characterized as having a very small and petite frame with very little body fat. These are the type of people that we used to see them in middle school just ordering everything on the lunch menu and they never gain an ounce. Those are the ectomorphs, okay? Back in the day, that's the kind of person I envied because I just wanted to eat a whole box of pizza and not get fat, but your girl got fat real easy. But the disadvantage for these people is that it is really hard to gain weight. So if they're trying to put on muscle, they're trying to have slim thick figure or just any figure at all, it's gonna take a lot more work, especially in the kitchen, to be adding on that weight. And an endomorph body type has a higher fat percentage and naturally they carry less muscle and they just appear to be more round and soft. They also put on pounds a little bit easier than an ecto and a mesomorph. Doesn't necessarily mean that these people are fat. So in my last video that I made, I put up some pictures of like Marilyn Monroe and a bunch of other girls that had more of an endomorph body type and people took that very offensively but guys, being an endomorph does not mean that you are fat, overweight, or obese. It just means your body type carries excess fat easier than the other two body types. Now, as I stated in my last video, if you have any of these body types, you also want to factor in your current diet. So you might be a mesomorph, but you are severely under eating and you think you're an ectomorph. So kind of look back, like I said in my old video, kind of look back into childhood. Were you somebody that would, would eat a lot and not really pack on pounds? Or were you somebody that was able to eat a lot and you just gained a lot of weight? Or were you somebody that really didn't eat that much and you just carried weight naturally? You were called big boned. I'm not fat, I'm big boned. You can't slim down bones, stupid. Once you factor in all of those things, you can kind of determine what your body type is. And then your, your training and your eating methods will kind of factor in and help you get to that desired goal that you want, which is slim thick if that's what you want. If you don't, you can also utilize these tools to get a body type that you want. For example, if you're trying to lose weight and you're an endomorph, you can go ahead and factor in these tips such as knowing your body type, knowing what diet you need to follow, knowing what training methods you need to do in order to lose the desired weight you want. Lastly, we have a combined body type. This is when somebody has more than one of those body types that I listed. I actually fall into this category because I am an ecto endomorph, meaning I carry a lot more weight on my bottom half than on my upper half, but my upper half is relatively slim, meaning I don't gain a lot of weight, so I don't carry the weight there, making me ecto on top and endo on the bottom. Typically, people that are ecto endomorphs are pear shaped just like me. I have narrow shoulders, I'm softer on the top and bottom, but I don't gain weight easily on my upper body. I gain it all on my, my lower. Because somebody that's an endo ectomorph, these are people that have more of an apple shaped body where they gain weight on their top and their lower doesn't really add on weight. And these body types do matter because let's just say you are a girl that naturally thicker hourglass body type. It's going to be a lot easier for you to get to your desired goals because your weight naturally distributes in that fashion versus somebody that doesn't have an hourglass figure. She might need to tweak her training methods and her diet to re-body comp, which is just recompositioning. But don't let that scare you because it is possible and it's actually not that hard or that bad. Section two is going to be your actual workout routine. It's just building ratios that give an illusion of an hourglass figure, no matter what body tape you have. So that's where it comes in when I said it's not that bad and it's not that hard. Stated above, a girl that has a naturally curvier body will have a lot easier time achieving this body goal, but that's mainly when it comes to diet. Now, when it comes to actual exercise, I think every body type should personally train the same because it pretty much is all the same. If you are even a curvier girl, you want to build the same ratios, such as your shoulders, your quads, your medius and minimus to give the illusion of a more curvy body. And that goes for any body type that you do have. So to achieve this body type, I highly recommend having at least two lower body days a week. It should be glute focused. And I also don't recommend doing more than that. I see a lot of girls online doing three to four to five glute and leg days. And yes, you guys, you can do that. I mean, there's studies back behind it saying why you can. I personally love recovery because you guys, you go to the gym, you're breaking your muscle down. 
You come home, you're recovering the muscles to grow. You're not growing your muscles in the gym, you're tearing them down. So to me, if you're tearing them down twice a week, hardcore, and you're giving them your all, you do not need excess leg days or glute days. And personally, I don't find it fun that way. And typically my lower body days look like my first lower body day is going to be a quad glute focus day. And my second is a full on booty day where I'm just focusing on glutes. And I will be making my full gym quad and glute day and my full gym full booty day. So you guys understand what I mean by these two kind of workouts. Staying on track with leg days, I want you guys to know that glute activation is key and is vital to growing your glutes so you guys can really wake those glutes up. You guys, we live such sedentary lives and unless you're a construction worker and you're always in a field or you're doing something very active for your work, you're typically seated on a desk so our glutes are not awake ever, especially when you're trying to get into a workout. We need those glutes awoken so we can actually feel the mind to muscle connection so we can get a greater pump so we can tear that muscle down so when we get home we can recover that muscle and they grow ginormous and of course after activation we're gonna go ahead and get to our actual workout and this is where compound lifts are huge are vital in our workout programs you guys really just focus on your compound lifts such as your hip thrusts your deadlifts your squats your lunges these are amazing movements and I actually neglected them in the beginning because I would see all these girls do kickbacks and boost ball weird stuff and I literally fell for all of it and my results didn't come quick enough and that's why I said I want them trial and error and I unlocked the secret and I'm sharing it right now so stick to your compound movements progress each week with those movements and that's how you're actually growing to grow your glutes now I didn't mean to bash the isolation movements I just stated some of them were really weird and unnecessary but you guys isolation movements I know they get a bad rep especially nowadays people are like promoting compound lifts so much but isolation movements are actually really really good especially as like pumper movements and just really getting the blood flow going I I love me some isolation movements. I typically will only do two to three compound lifts and give it my all. And my isolation movements really are just like that extra burner that I needed to make my glutes on absolute fire. I have noticed such a big difference when I actually do a combination of both. Guys, upper body days are extremely important. And I think a lot of girls actually fail in this department because they think upper body is gonna make them masculine. So they just do all leg days and avoid the upper body days. But you don't realize that if you want that slim, thick look and you wanna be curvy, if that's your desired goal, I'm gonna keep on saying that if that's your desired goal. This is not ideal, this is just a perception of a fudged up world we live in so i'm just saying if you want this look hey your hair upper body days should never be neglected and here's why you want to broaden your shoulders because it gives the illusion of a smaller cinched waist okay so if you're working on your shoulders the waist is going to look smaller and if you're working on your back if you guys ever notice when you guys have like a bra bulge it kind of makes you look thicker from the side and from the back as well so you properly train back and you start leaning out that back from the muscles being built as well as widening the shoulders you guys are automatically going to get a curvier illusion of a body type no matter what body type you have if you have an apple body type you can still definitely train your shoulders and your back to just overall look a little bit more curvier it's going to give an illusion. It's not about taking your actual anatomy in your skeletal body and changing it to be a curvy woman. You are giving the illusion of a curvier body by certain techniques of re-body compositioning your body to what you want it to look like. And it's literally that simple. So for upper body days, I highly recommend doing a shoulder day and a back day. These are crucial in order for you to get the curvy hourglass look. And I don't understand why I always see on YouTube these videos of like how to get sexy arms and it's all very like 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 movements like this with no weights you guys you need to be lifting weights you need to be putting some size on i think a lot of girls misinterpret upper body days for just doing a little bit of bicep a little bit of triceps and not doing shoulders because they think they're gonna look boyish and i see so many girls when i go to the gym and even like my own family members that are like but i don't want to do shoulders because i'm gonna look like masculine and it's no you're not you're actually gonna look so sexy if you actually do it properly and lastly of course you need to include cardio into your routine you guys should not just cut cardio cardio out because it is not the devil okay so many people think cardio is going to annihilate their gains their booty gains but you guys your heart is also a vital organ literally to keep you alive it is keeping you alive okay if you're not taking care of your heart why are you taking care of your body because your heart is taking care of your body go do some cardio I'm not saying do a marathon but doing some stairmaster maybe 10 15 20 minutes a day is going to be amazing for your body especially if you're looking for the slim thick portion because part of being 
thick is also being slim and if you want to have that illusion you need to keep your body weight at not an extreme amount okay you want a little bit of body fat because you can't just be slim thick without no body fat that doesn't work you're not going on a bodybuilding competition to have shredded abs you're going for the look of having a more feminine body so in order to do that, you need to have body fat on you, but you also don't want to have an extreme amount of body fat on you because first and foremost, it's not healthy. Of course, you want to take care of your heart, your cardiovascular health. And if you also want that slim thick look, you're going to have to maintain a certain body fat percentage to keep your upper body a little bit more slim and trimmed. And guys, this is not going to happen overnight. You have to understand if you are trying to take a apple body shape and make it an hourglass shape, you're going to have to go through body recomposition, which is going to take a little bit of time to get you there. For example, you're going to have to shred it first to burn off any visceral fat, any extra added weight that you don't need. And then you can go ahead, once you get to a certain body fat, you can go ahead and start bulking and adding on muscle in your glutes and in your shoulders. And then once you get to a desired goal of adding on a certain amount of muscle, you can go ahead and shred back down. Then you're going to go ahead and have a better body composition to get you to the goal that you want, which is slim and thick -um. So it will take time. Don't think you're going to wake up and have this overnight. I'm not here to give you unrealistic expectations. And if you guys do want some help and you guys just aren't down to figure this out on your own, like I said, click the link in the bio because I am here to help you with everything you need. I've been through all of this. So everything about this and I'm here to help you if you need it. Section three is going to be your diet, which is 80% of your results so obviously this is the most important out of all the sections and you need to know do you need to be in a calorie deficit surplus or maybe at maintenance this is something you need to figure out before you start anything to break it down even further if you are overweight then you need to go ahead and be in a calorie deficit to lose a little bit of extra weight then you can go ahead and start eating at maintenance or in a surplus wanting to put on more muscle and vice versa for somebody that's underweight you're gonna want to go ahead and eat in a surplus to gain some weight and then you can go ahead and eat at maintenance or in a calorie deficit to lose the extra fat that you put on in your bulking phase I am going to go ahead and throw this in there. You do not need to be in a crazy fad diet. Never, ever fall for any of these fad diets you see on the internet. This will never get you the results you want. Okay, never. Do not fall for keto, carnivore, any of that bullcrap. None of it works. If you are celiac and dairy intolerant, yes, you should cut them out of your diet. But if you aren't, why are you going gluten free? No, I just have to throw that in there because I'm so sick of seeing diet fads. I only promote a balanced diet approach on this channel and for any of my clients. Of course, factoring in if they have anything that they need to be taken out of their diet for medical reasons, you get the gist. Section four is going to be sleep and recovery. This is the best part, okay? I don't know why a lot of people like to neglect because who the hell doesn't like sleep and who doesn't want to recover to feel amazing? The must celebrate with a nap. Okay, but unfortunately, a lot of us do neglect this portion because they don't think it's that important. They think, oh, well, um, I'm just working out and eating, so this, this has nothing to do with it. But guys, stress has a huge effect on your weight, on how your body turns out to look. It's everything, you guys. Put your body in a very non-stress environment and you will look 300 times better. The results you want way faster and you're gonna feel way more abundant hence why you probably get the results faster because you'll be able to push yourself harder in the gym like i said previously you guys go to the gym to tear down muscle and you guys come home to rebuild that muscle so it's crucial and vital for you guys to sleep enough to eat enough and to make sure you guys aren't stressed out or in a very hyper stressed environment try to meditate try to cool down because stress never gets you anywhere and if you are over training and you're overdoing it at the gym that is just tearing your muscle down and you're not gonna get the results you want as quick as you would have. I've noticed a significant difference in my body after I started prioritizing my sleep and my recovery over just overtraining, thinking the gym is everything. Literally made the gym my first home, not my second, okay? Like I was in the gym 24 eight and now it's my, it's my second, okay? It's my second home now. Section five is going to be your least favorite part, but the most important part, and that is having patience and trusting the goddamn process. This is by far the most important tip of all, but don't click off just yet because I saw that eye roll. I saw that eye roll, Karen. You are mad because I told you what you didn't want to hear, 
but don't click off because if you stay till the end, I have a conclusion that will make all of this come together and make you understand perfectly what you need to do to get the body you want. Patience is key here when wanting to get a nicer figure, but to get the slim thick look, it's a whole other type of patience. Think about it. You are trying to make two opposite body types morph into one. You ever watch that show Dog and Cat? It's weird, okay? It's just, it's weird. That process needs more time because you'll need to have phases of cutting and bulking. Achieve the thick and then the slim. But don't let that discourage you because you guys, it is possible to achieve the slim thick look if that's what you want or just an overall curvier body type and like I said before want it bad enough you are gonna have to put in that energy and you will get the goals that you want and think about it this way a year from now you're gonna be in the same position you are right now so let you just be thick when you get there if you stayed till the end and all the Karens clicked off we're gonna go ahead and get to the conclusion this is the part I look forward to in everybody's videos because it just makes sense it's not so scientific and it's not hard to understand and it's just like dumb and dumber guide okay so I'm gonna go ahead and share the conclusion on how to get slim thick in 1.5 minutes. Class is in session. Take a girl who is underweight and doesn't have much curves. We're gonna call her Angie, okay? Angie it is. In Angie's case, we would assess her to get her current caloric intake to see if she is underweight because she is under eating anywhere from 900 to 1200 calories which a lot of girls unfortunately do nowadays or if she just naturally has a fast metabolism that's going to be our first assessment because that's the most important that's 80 percent of our results we need to figure out her body type is she naturally an ectomorph or does she look like an ectomorph because of the fact that she's under eating because everybody says you have to be eating 900 calories to be thin and perfect that's just pinterest guys that's not me if angie is under eating we would need to slowly increase her caloric intake to get her to her set point or to where her body is comfortable at gaining a certain amount of weight but if she has a fast metabolism we would just need to put her in a slight caloric surplus at the beginning Angie's training styles would need to be minimal cardio anywhere from two to three days a week more steady state versus high intensity interval training and weight training two upper body sessions a shoulder and back focus day as well as anywhere from two to three lower body days depending on how better able she is to recover cover from each session each week Angie would need to progress in her weights because this tears the muscle down and the calorie surplus builds a muscle torn down in the gym booty gains after Angie has put on the desired amount of weight we would go ahead and put her on a mini cutting phase so she can go ahead and trim down any excess fat she has in her abdominal region her upper body region even on the lower body so she can tighten up and see the muscle that she had gained now after she loses that amount of weight you're gonna go ahead and see a curvier body from her glute maximus medius and minimus being a little bit more built her shoulders being more carved out which would make her waist look smaller and her back overall being more defined giving the illusion of a slim thick body type and that would apply for somebody that is overweight as well of course putting her on a cutting phase and then putting her on a little bit of a bulking phase once she loses the amount of weight she needs so that is going to conclude this video on how to get slim thickums hit that subscribe button turn on the post notification bell and smash that thumbs up button or thumbs down depending on if you liked it or not and leave a comment below of what body type you think you have so we can go ahead and get a better understanding of each other i think it's fascinating and as always i love you guys and i'll catch you in my next video you take my Just